How did you get onto Ethan's story? Yeah. Um, hi, I'm, I'm Jim Spion. Yeah. Um, thanks for having me. Sorry I'm late. Uh, the thing about uh, independent filmmakers is we still have day jobs, a lot of us. And uh, <laughs> so uh, between that and the, the fun New York traffic, I was a little bit late <coughs> for the end. Um, you know, um, I've been making movies uh, quite a long time. Uh, <coughs> Started out. Um, I went to film school, and I did, um, and then I did a number of uh, uh, fiction films, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then the last ten years or so, really got involved with documentary. But m really, all of them were kind of small scale, looking at uh, regional history things. Uh, I did a film about my family's uh, dairy farm in upstate New York, and I'm working on a series of films now down on the eastern shore of Virginia about some of the traditions there. So I, I haven't really done a, a so-called um, political film, even though I certainly have a lot of opinions in that way. I think a lot of my friends wonder why I haven't done a political film. But then uh, this this whole thing happened uh, about a year ago with, um, with WikiLeaks releasing this video. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, I, at first I was just completely horrified, like a lot of people were, uh, in, in watching that video. Um, and then the second thing that happened was I watched how the media treated that video, the, the mainstream media for the most part, and I found it was pretty much the same on every channel, didn't matter what it was, whether it was Fox or, or uh, ABC News or, or CNN or CBS or MSNBC, it, it really didn't matter, it was the same on every channel, which was... Um, Let's find two people with opinions we know in advance, and we'll have them argue about this. And they'll say things that we already know they're going to say. And then we'll say that we were journalists, and we did our job. And it's bullshit. Um, real <coughs> talk. And uh, it, because it's this fake kind of theatrical debate, debate that gets set up that's totally circumscribed in advance, and then cut to the commercial. And um, so that was depressing. But at the same time, I saw this little ray of hope, and I was, you know, trolling around the internet just trying to find information on this, and I found an interview with Ethan. Um, and, uh, you know, a few websites were doing interviews with him, um, and I thought, wow, that's really interesting. Here's a guy who was actually on the scene. Why hasn't CBS or MSNBC <laughs> or ABC or any of these people with a lot more resources than me sent someone out to Wichita to talk to this guy? I'll tell you why, because it doesn't fit the script. We can't have people who have been there actually telling you what actually happened. Uh, that, will, that won't do at all. People will have to start listening to that and making up their own minds and stuff like that. No, no, no. So, I mean, I was the guy. I flew out uh, about a month after that, uh, in, I think it was May of last year, and uh, spent a couple days in, in Wichita with Ethan and met his sweet kids, and uh, we did a lot of shooting of uh, just stuff that, that Ethan was doing with the kids and stuff. And then we did a very extensive interview. Um, really, I think we three or four hours that interview. And um, of course, a fraction of that's in, in the movie, and, and that's normal. But, um, and, and, and I just thought it was, uh, you know, an amazing story. Um, first of all, this first-hand account of, of what we weren't really getting the whole picture of. But also for me as a filmmaker, um, I, I was really attracted to, to Ethan's story as like a character because um, it's a it's a great American story in a way. It's a transformational story, uh, and the Americans love those stories. So he starts out as this one kind of guy who's expecting this one thing, and he's in it for these these very kind of patriotic reasons of, of uh, wanting to um, do what's right and wanting to defend what he thinks has been told, to defend the Rockies and, um, and finding an entirely different picture when he arrives there and he's really struggling to put that together. And I think uh, <coughs> the film that I made um, really charts Ethan's journey, not just with the, this so-called collateral murder incident, but also the other things that happened to him along the way. I mean, the way I see it, and, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the, the incident that day in, in July with the Apache helicopters, I think, was the, the straw that broke the camel's back, in a way. I think Ethan had already seen a lot, and he had already been through a lot, and he would already seen a lot, and this was sort of like, okay, this is really the thing that sort of was the, was the, the thing that changed him, I think, permanently, in a way. And um, 
but it took time, you know, and, and uh, it, I think, you know, Ethan in a lot of ways was trying to to not deal with it or to deal with it in different ways that weren't necessarily um, healthy like a lot of uh, veterans do. And um, so in a way it was a double-edged thing, I think, when this collateral murder thing came out. I mean, the thing yeah. you told me is like at first you were just like, just been completely enraged and like you didn't want to deal with this at all and here it was again and um, and of course to his great credit he uh, found the courage to really confront this and and um, and start talking about it and found that people really wanted to listen to him and uh, so I mean all that to me is just an extraordinary uh, story uh, about uh, one guy that also touches on this kind of amazing world event mm -hmm. that we were all witness to so but that's a long answer to your question of why I wanted to make this movie with Ethan. Uh, what I hope to do eventually is actually make a longer film about this incident because what, what I really would like to do is look at it from a number of points of view from people who were involved. Uh, of course, importantly, including Iraqis uh, who were most affected by what happened in that particular incident. Uh, but also, I would like to include uh, dissenting points of view from people that are even within your company. So I think, um, for me, the fascinating thing about this this whole, one of the things, um, if I step back from the horror of it, um, it's a really perfect microcosm of what that war is and was. Um, fighting in a, in, you know, <coughs> against, as you put it, people in sweatpants and sandals, and, um, and not being able to tell who might be dangerous to our forces and and so the whole confusion and then the, the, from the Iraqi side just trying to live a normal life in what is your city and you know of course the preponderance of the the casualties are going to be civilians as they are in that incident and you know so the whole thing offers an opportunity to to look at uh, one incident and kind of extrapolate from that what these wars really are um, you know, as I say, I think on, on my website, it, you, know, you, you can you can spout statistics about you know hundreds of thousands of dead, but people can't absorb that kind of thing. Um, but if you, if my thought was I could explore this one tragic uh, incident uh, from as many perspectives as I can. Hopefully, what you come away from with that is how tragic times thousands something like the Iraq War is. So. Um, you know, my hope is that by getting attention at this film festival um, this week, um, that it will help me develop it into a larger project that, you know, can continue to kind of expand on the story and, and get this out there to to more and more people. So I did, I brought um, a couple of uh, different things. I brought, uh, and, and some of you probably have seen some of this stuff on the internet, depending on whether you're familiar with my film or not, but I, I, um, I brought a clip a short clip with Ethan, and I also brought a trailer, which is quite new, uh, preview, uh, which has some stuff that uh, was not in the other clip. Um, so I'm happy to show both of those. Uh, do you have a DVD player, or is that, is that what we're using? <laughs> Hopefully they'll work. <laughs>